So a couple of months ago, I was scrolling through social media and one day I saw an ad by Ralph Lauren. They were marketing a Father's Day special of the new Polo Blue Parfum collection. And there was a funny exchange with a gentleman that was scoffing at the idea of calling a men's fragrance a parfum or a perfume. Someone was quick to call him out as it's not social media if there's not someone having an argument in the comments somewhere. But it made me think about the idea of concentration levels and fragrances and how even for those that love fragrances, they can be a tad bit confusing. So in this video, what I want to do is go through and discuss essentially everything you need to know about fragrance concentration levels, such as what are the different concentration levels, their differences, and speak to some of the misconceptions and questions about them, especially when it comes to performance. So in order to understand the differences between concentration levels, one first must understand the basics of what a fragrance is composed of. At the core of the bottling process, it starts with fragrance oils that are either obtained through natural materials, through a form of extraction, or use synthetically created materials. The topic of raw versus synthetic is not something I wanna to touch on in this video, but these fragrance oils are the basis for what will allow a fragrance to eventually smell. During this process, fragrance oils are combined with a list of ingredients in order to enter its final form of being a wearable scent, with the most prominent and noticeable being alcohol, specifically ethanol. The amount of oil used in comparison to ethyl alcohol is what determines the classified concentration of a fragrance. Although there are some general guidelines, the amount of oil used can fluctuate for a variety of reasons, and concentrations have become as much a part of marketing as they are also actual indications of oil concentration levels. In general, there are four primary concentrations that you will see most often. First, we have eau de cologne or cologne, a concentration developed in the 18th century in Germany by a perfumer of Italian descent, Giovanni Maria Farina, and is known to have a bright opening yet is short-lived. Eau de cologne typically will be made up of less than 5% oil to alcohol in that ratio. That said, the word cologne has become a term accepted by many consumers to mean pretty much any fragrance oriented to men. Although not specifically accurate, this has become an understood idea by many brands out there and will sometimes be utilized in part of their marketing efforts. Next up, you have eau de toilette or EDT, a widely used concentration level in the industry, typically utilizing 10 to 15% oil concentrate, although this use of oil is often a subjective choice based on the perfumer. To follow, you have Eau de Parfum, or EDP, a fragrance concentration typically made up between 15 to 18% oil and is often seen as a nice middle ground between EDT and Parfum by consumers and brands. And finally, you have Parfum, or Extrait. This is a fragrance known to use the highest concentration of oil in the bottling process, often utilizing an oil concentration of 20 to 25%, but it can go much higher than that. As an example, we have Amouage with their Extrait fragrances as Reflection 45, referring to the actual oil concentration level with that 45. These four categories are going to be the primary buckets for concentration levels. There are some additional oddballs out there that have some different classifications. One one good example is from Roja, uh, the Parfum Cologne Collection. So we actually have these on our site available for purchase. So definitely check it out and you can actually shop by different concentration levels. But the whole idea around this concentration level, very similar in terms of oil concentration to an Eau de Parfum, uh, but really kind of highlighting that really bright opening and then having more of the staying power that leans into an Eau de Parfum. And then that oil concentration is also going to be in alignment with that. So just goes to show this is not a perfect science. It's really a matter of of subjective taste at times and how this is classified both from understanding the amount of oil that's in there, but also in addition to that, being a way for consumers to easily understand and uh, market products uh, effectively. But now let's talk about some different questions and misconceptions that come along with concentration levels. And these are things that I had to investigate further for myself and I just see talked about quite a bit uh, in the world of the fragrance community. Now the first question, pretty logical one to ask after going through this is, why don't brands make fragrances with higher concentrations across the board? Well, there are a few reasons. One is going to come down to the cost. Getting these concentrated oils is one of the more expensive aspects of creating a fragrance, especially with certain materials that can be more sought after when you're talking about uh, sought after raw materials, especially. Secondly, diluting fragrance oils with alcohol has benefits. Alcohol can serve as a solvent for aromatic compounds in a formulation. It helps to ensure a better shelf life of the fragrance, and it helps with the stability of the final product and is going to assist with offering a more detectable smell as some 
potent dilution using alcohol will make the smell more traceable to your nose while aiding in the consistent evaporation rate, which evaporation is how we're able to smell in the first place uh, with the help of our olfactory system. The other big question that often comes up is, it's probably safe to assume that higher concentrations means better performance, right? Well, unfortunately, it's not so easy. Although having more fragrance oil will generally help when it comes to performance, the number one determining factor on how a fragrance will perform comes down to the molecular structure of the fragrance itself and what molecules are ultimately chosen. When we hear the idea of notes, what this is really telling us is that that perfumer has either taken raw materials or synthetically created ones to allow us to interpret a smell. These molecules that are chosen all have different evaporation rates. In other words, the more volatile and quicker a molecule evaporates, the quicker the smell will dissipate. Two key points of measurement for molecules used in fragrances, one being known as vapor pressure, which is a way in which molecules are measured for their volatility, typically in microgram per liter. As a general point, molecules such as vanillin or ambroxan are much more stable than that of citrus-oriented molecules that evaporate quickly. For example, the vapor pressure of vanillin, a molecule used to produce the smell of vanilla, measures at two micrograms a liter, meaning it is a very stable molecule compared to something like isoamyl acetate, a molecule used to reproduce the smell of bananas that has an evaporation rate of 24,000 micrograms a liter, which will only be detectable by the nose less than a minute after actually being exposed. Another common use of measurement is detection threshold. This will allow a perfumer to know the precise amount of material needed in order for an odor to be detected. Molecules with a higher detection threshold, such as vanillin and ambroxan, are able to be detected much easier, even at diluted levels. A great example of these two ideas coming into play is with Dior Sauvage. Despite there being a few different concentration level options for Dior Sauvage, Many will say that the EDT version is arguably the strongest of all the concentrations in the performance category, even though they have a parfum concentration. This is most likely a byproduct of the molecules chosen, and with the EDT using ambroxan and molecules made to embody amber, these are more likely helping in the longevity of the fragrance. So despite there not being a clean way of always knowing as a consumer, Look at the notes of the fragrance. That's usually a really good indicator. If they're using notes such as amber, rich woods, tobacco, or vanilla, that is usually a good sign that the fragrance will last longer compared to something that has a very citrus-packed uh, type of body whose molecules are going to have a tendency to quickly evaporate. So the best thing to do is ultimately test the fragrance, use uh, different data points that you're able to collect from specific brands and other fragrances that you have so that you can make an informed buying decision at the end of the day. But guys, that's all I have for this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. It'd be a great indicator for me too also, because this is more of like a educational, uh, getting into more of the nerdy stuff around fragrances. I don't even know if there's a market for this type of content. So uh, any encouragement in the comments would be helpful down below. Also definitely check out teddybaldestar.com and our newly launched fragrance section. We have some amazing world-class brands there, great place to shop around, uh, get familiar with some other product. We're fully authorized to sell all of these goods and any purchase helps support the content uh, that we're creating here. Also be sure to follow along on Instagram to see some great photos of fragrance bottles, get some inspiration for your next scent and to communicate with us a little bit more directly. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well and I'll see you all very soon.